and welcome to the latest episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor. This is your go-to show for your best bets ahead of the weekend. And this weekend, we have top class action from Ascot, where the grade one Ascot chase heads the way for us. As well as that, we're going to be looking at the Stayers Hurdle as our anti-post race in focus, looking ahead to the Cheltenham Festival. Now, I'm going to be looking at all of these races in the company of our usual company, really. Well, I say usual company, one and a half worth, because... <laughs> In person, I at least have Declan Richter at theraces.com and Sam Boswell via Skype of Bet Victor yourself. So, Sam, you better have a good reason not to be here in person. Yeah, I've uh, travelled up to Blackpool of all places for a good friend of mine, Brian and Susan's wedding. They're massive racing fans, love their trips to York and Weatherby. So, I'm up in the northwest. Uh, I can see the Blackpool Tower. It's not, unfortunately, beach weather, but uh, it is good racing weather. Fingers crossed Ascot's going to get enough rain in the next couple of days to, to hopefully see some competitive stuff. Definitely so. So much to look forward to. But Sam, of course, we're losing him though, Jacqueline. Glad to see you've made the effort. Yes, I have. Yeah, I was thinking it must have been Sam's wedding if he wasn't turning up today. But uh, that was the only excuse. But yeah, as you say, Kay, big weekend. Uh, Ask any time Ascot race is a big weekend. So I'm really looking forward to it. So yeah, excited. So much to look forward to, as Declan has said, and we will be getting Sam's thoughts, of course, via Skype then as well. But we say it every single week, do remember to gamble responsibly. We had a good weekend last weekend with results, but we always say to you every single week that our tips are not guaranteed to win, but we'll still do our best to point you in the right direction. Do also remember to like and subscribe to the At The Races YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. Right, time to get cracking with the racing because we have a good race up first. This is the grade one Ascot chase. This comes up at 3.35, funnily enough, at Ascot, where Fakir Dudery still heads the betting as the 13 to 8 market leader. But this race is fascinating, isn't it, Declan? And so much, obviously, centres around what to expect from Shishkin. Yeah, it does. It's, uh, it, you know, he's coming here after, uh, with a first time tongue tie on on the back of a, a wind operation as well. But, you know, I think we should probably maybe start with, with Fakir. He, he's the winner of the race last season. A good, solid horse. You know, not an outstandingly brilliant horse in terms of ability, but he's rock solid. Comes here in good form again this season. Uh, Pictori, this is going to be the biggest test of his career, no doubt. Uh, I want to see how his jumping holds up, especially if he's taken on for the lead by IRI. But look, I think at those prices, the bet for me is Shishkin. I'm willing to give him one more chance. Um, I just think he wants this step up and trip. He's bred for it. He races like he, he wants it as well. Um, and look, I, if people think he's gone at the game, I think that's a perfectly plausible kind of a way to look at things. But I, at the prices, I'm willing to give him one more chance. I didn't think his uh, Tingle Creek run was that bad under the context of first run of the season, trip too sharp, coming on the back of a rare bone condition, uh, awful jump at the, at the third, last jumped left, lost lots, lost lots of momentum. And then all in the, all of that, you know, Edward Stone was a good winner. So I'm willing to give Shishkin one more chance. I just cannot see how he doesn't enjoy this step up and trip if he's back to his best. To be fair, you have made your bed, so you may lie in it now. With <laughs> Absolutely. Step up and trip for Declan, <laughs> Sam, but how are you playing this? Yeah, I think Declan's made a brilliant argument. And uh, for once, I'm completely on his side here. Uh, you know, of all the trainers you're going to have to bring a horse back from a layoff, Nicky Henderson's proven time and time again, top class horses. He has the ability to do that with them. Uh, I think the race is fascinating. He's going to get a competitive test here. If they've got aspirations of going to win at the festival, he's going to have to be nearly 90, 95% tuned up at this point in time, just sort of, what, three and a half weeks out. Uh, I do have a lot of respect for the favourite Fakir Duderiz, but I just think Shishkin on his day, you know, he can run a couple of pounds below his best mark and he's still going to be the better horse. I'm very excited to see him back. And I think we've got a really, really good clash. Just hope that Nicky decides to to run him and doesn't get the temptation to take him out closer to the time. Uh, Pick Dory, just to mention, I think a lot of people backed him earlier on in the week thinking that we'd get one of the big two out of the market. And obviously we haven't. So I think it's curious. I think he, he is a bit of a joker in the pack, but I think he's going to have to show a bit more than he's seen so far. Obviously, Paul Nichols is fantastic at delivering these horses. I just think that potentially people that were keen on him were keener on hoping that this was going to cut up and it hasn't. 
No, it hasn't as yet, has it? Like I said, we are still on ground watch at the minute, very much so, and we will still be probably until an hour before the race. But goodness me, the pair of you two in agreement this early on, I don't know what's quite going on. So I need to set some, um, just to level it off, really, because I am with Fakir Dudery. Hopefully people will now start putting their deserved respect on this <laughs> horse's name. Only an eight-year-old. I absolutely mm. love him in a race full of unknowns. Now, Potentially one of the ways to play this race, if we're looking ahead to the Ryanair chase, is to back the horse you think is going to win this for the Ryanair then. It's such a muddling picture at the mm. minute, the Ryanair. So if you really fancy a horse for this race, you may as well back them for the Ryanair. They're only going to shorten. Yeah. Fakir Dudery is a solid play for me. Pick Dory may well get taken on for the lead, given our current lineup of horses. Not expecting some of them to necessarily run, but this is a massive step up for Pick Dory. Shishkin, for me, he didn't jump well enough in the Tingle Creek, and that's regardless of the wind issue he was subsequently found to be suffering from. So... Shishkin, for me, massive question mark. It's evident. Yeah. Pictori needs to really step up his grade. Fakir Dudery to win this race for the second year running. All conditions in his favour. For me, yeah. he's just a, a faultless horse. And I don't buy into this idea that he's not the horse he was. I think that's completely unfair for Fakir Dudery. So, yes, he probably was going to be beaten in Thurlis last time out. But giving a lot of weight away to a yeah, nice giving horse. Giving a lot of weight away yeah. to a very smart horse and going through the gears. So Fakir Dudery for me, Shishkin for the pair of you two. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, that's definitely divided opinion in our first race. Do remember to leave your own selections in the comments below. We always like to hear from you. Right, we're moving on to grade two action in our next contest. This is the Reynolds Sound Novices Chase. It comes up at 150 over three miles. Also at Ascot. Only four runners here, Declan. Bold Endeavour is our short price favourite so how are you playing this? Well yeah look I think Bold Endeavour is the most likely winner whether I'm not I'm going to bet him at that price is another thing uh, you know really disappointing kind of field small field um, you know Bold Endeavour is kind of maybe the horse that the only horse in here for me that's got kind of Cheltenham potential Cheltenham aspirations but then the other thing with him is he does jump to his right a lot so this is maybe going to be his gold cup uh, I think getting back on our right handed track is going to suit him uh, we can see him there in action winning at Doncaster the last time he jumped and right an awful lot uh, going right handed Ascot's going to be uh, a big plus for him as as well as potentially maybe getting an easy lead he is stepping up in trip uh, there is pedigree uh, there is stamina on both sides of the pedigrees by fame and glory uh, but if Nico get, if De Bonville gets an easy an easy lead he's got to turn it into a relative test of speed because stamina might be a little bit of a, a, a worry which is why I'm not going to back him at that price but um, yeah look he, he does a lot right he's a likeable horse he jumps well does go to his right but he is a very good jumper. So in terms of who you're siding with then, are you having a bet in this race? Not at those prices. I think maybe if we going to be greedy, if we got maybe about even money about Bold Endeavour, I, I'd happily back him at those kind of uh, that price. But no, it's uh, he's too short for me now because the race has caught up quite badly since the five day stage. He's pushing his luck, Sam, isn't he? Asking for <laughs> even money about Bold Endeavour here. Are you tempted to push him out to give him that? <laughs> Uh, no, certainly not. I won't be laying Declan even money. I'd be surprised if anyone is come day of the race. But uh, I do think it's an interesting forerunner race. For all, I'd rather see a bit more depth to it. And I, I kind of, if I had to have a play here, I thought uh, Kinder Quoto, just such a progressive horse. Very, very interesting for the England. I've gone up something like, what, £30, I think it is, from the start of the summer, if we go right back. And obviously last seen at Aintree and you know, did jump a little bit out to one side. I think going this way round will suit. I also think the pace angle is interesting here. I could just see the favourite and potentially JJ Riley just, just wanting to go on a bit. And I just wonder if he could pick up the pieces a little bit, if he's good enough to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I won't be having a bet in the race, but if I had to put a selection up, that's who I'd go with. And I'd try and take the favourite on. But as Declan's alluded to, it is a shade disappointing. And I must say, I think Oscar Elite for me in there, rounding off the field, a horse that I had so much hope for and definitely have been left a little bit mm. cold by, sadly, on recent starts. A lot of people have, really, haven't they? Like I say, he just hasn't fulfilled that earlier on potential. Now, for me, last weekend and all throughout the week, I've been trying to take on odds on favourites, and it's been a pretty good way to play it. But for me, just bold endeavour isn't worth taking on here. I agree with you, Declan, on that basis, because... In comparison to Kanondu Kwetu, who is a little bit of a thinker about it, that's why he's been able to rack up this sequence, because he doesn't do an awful lot when he gets his head in front. But the yeah. fact he won cosy enough, but by a narrow enough margin, all the same in a handicap off a 1-3-2 last time out, rather than Bold Endeavour, absolutely bolted up in a handicap off of a mark of 1-3-9. This is handicap form coming into a graded contest, yeah. but... 
given, as we've all said, kind of the fact that this isn't quite the grade two contest we were necessarily hoping for, that's good enough. And Bold Endeavour is just a, in a whole league of his own in comparison to these horses for me. So not an odds on shot that I want to be taking on. And you've both reiterated your, well, you both said your ways that you would like to play this grade two contest. Right. We may not have had a massive betting heat in our last race. We certainly do in our next. So this is the Swinley Chase again at Ascot. This comes up at 2.25 over three miles wide open this one with captain nord currently as the four to one market leader from phoenix way at 11 to two revels hill also the same price six to one bar though declan so wide open contest who are you siding with yeah i'm with danny Carwin here um and the faster the ground is at ascot the better his chance because i think fast ground is going to play against the likes of phoenix way revels hill uh, laskinen and a couple of others there down there at the market who aren't uh, in as good a form uh, in terms of pace there's a couple here who like to go forward but i can see it being a little bit tactical uh, but I, I just like that danny Carwin. he's a lovely horse he's a seer like he's his son of scorpion but uh... yeah, i was gonna say scorpion <laughs> and lovely doesn't seem to go in the same yeah yeah but he, he he's pretty straightforward to be fair to me and if you get a chance to go down and have a look at him at ascot go down and look he's a He's a lovely stamp of a horse. Uh, but look, he loves Ascot. I think he's been here five times, two wins, two seconds uh, out of those. But the, the key thing is the ground. If the times at Ascot are looking like the ground is going to be quick and coming in here on Friday morning, uh, kind of to the... Uh, the west of London, it's breezy as well. You know, the quicker the ground, the better his chance. Um, look, he doesn't maybe win as much as you'd like, but I just think with Paul Nichols doing the train and he goes well fresh, the Ascot record, and a, a horse is going to be at home, very much at home on quick ground. I think, you know, he's got an outstanding each way chance. Oh, you've almost persuaded me <laughs> to side with a son of Scorpion there mm. in a three-mile handicap. And the other, the other thing is... I, you, we look at these handicaps and we are always trying to look for up-and-comers. This is a funny race. I think five of the last ten renewals have actually been won by ten-year-olds and he is a ten-year-old, so don't let that kind of age bracket put you off. No, I was siding with the ten-year-olds as well. I'm really looking for the older horses. So we're both in agreement on that trend, Sam. Who are you siding with? Yeah, just, just to be contrary, I'm going to completely buck that idea of going for ten-year-olds of experience. And I'm going to look at one of the lighter-raced profiles over fences, which is uh, going to be uh, David Pipe's Neon Moon. Uh, this horse, I think, is a really, really interesting runner here. Um, finally sort of started to put his chase efforts together when just touched off at Taunton last time. Very painful if you'd backed him. Just got collared on the run in the last 50 yards and sort of really warmed to his task, jumping well throughout before just getting nailed. But he, he's sort of had an indifferent start to life as a chaser. He's definitely still got a bit of potential in the locker. I would argue that getting nudged up two pounds to one, two, five isn't the end of the world for him here. I think a bigger field will certainly help and suit concentrate his mind a little bit. And he'll really love the quicker surface, which I think is so key this weekend. That's the kind of thing we need to find. But a, a price of around, I think, 14 to one. We're paying the additional place as well. So you get your four places. Uh, like I say, I really, really like him here. And I think he's a bit of an each way dart. David Pipe's team ticking over nice enough for this time of year. He is, isn't he? he? Exactly. And like I say, he was so unlucky to be collared last time out then. So it does look a good each way price. You've both made very compelling arguments. <laughs> but I'm going to go against a pair of those because I think that, Sam, your traders have got this spot on between Captain Nord and Phoenix Way at the head of the market. I was really toying between the pair of these two. I didn't know exactly which way to go, but mm. I think I have to side with the favourite here, Captain Nord. This has been the plan. Well, it wasn't the original plan because the original plan must have been to go back to Kempton for the race that he won last year in what was the old racing post chase there. Yeah. But because of Frodon being in that race, it's push, pushed out a whole load of the entries for that race at this current stage out of the weight. Mm. So he's back on that same winning mark again here. And for all that Kempton would have been the ideal plan a week prior to that in what potentially might be a more feasible race if Frodon does take up the engagement at Kempton, yeah. then Captain Ord is just so well weighted for me to go hopefully in again here. I know he's a horse that doesn't overly convert his good runs into wins, but it was a much better run from him to finish second in the Sky Bet Chase last time out. So it is Captain Nord for me. Right, lots of ways to play that race. So again, do leave your own selections in the comments below. Now that's all of our scheduled Ascot races covered for us to preview. We're going to head over to the Sky Pad now, where we're going to be taking a look at the Stayers Hurdle, as well as getting the lads' best bets for the weekend.
Now, we're only four weeks away from the Cheltenham Festival, and on this week's Weekend Winners, we're going to be attempting to find the winner of the Stayers Hurdle. Now, this remains a very open contest, evidently, Declan. So who are you siding with at this stage? Yeah, look, I'm going to side with home by the leave, Joseph O'Brien. He ran well in the race last year. I think he's definitely an improved horse this season. Uh, I think there's two. The, the key to him, I think, maybe is actually going to be flooring Porto running to bring out the stamina in him. Uh, to Hoop, who maybe slight stamina worries the race that he did win a Gore in the last day was a kind of relative test of speed I'd say like if an end to end gallop over three miles he hasn't been tested over but home by the least stays uh, it'd be interesting to see if they put some cheek pieces on him I thought the last day when he won I thought he was idling very very badly it looked like he had loads up his sleeve to be honest uh, look Blazing Cal probably the one to beat after a brilliant return last weekend in the Boyne uh, you just uh, reports are he was quite fit pre-race so we'll see you know it could the bounce factor come into play with him if it does and then to who doesn't stay uh, is classic dream going to run you know even as flooring port are going to run it's a it's a very tricky race i think to have a bet in but i'm going to go with the solid the solid selection in my view home by the lee who's going to go there fresher than most uh so yeah i'm hoping he can uh, he can go a few places better than his good run in the race last year Oh, I totally agree. Sorry, <laughs> Sam, to, to interrupt there. But I am in total agreement with Declan here because home by the Lee. I just don't understand what more he has to do mm. to be pushing for favouritism there because it's just any excuse to, to side against him, people seem to find. But I think he has the best form from this season. Yeah. He's beaten the dual winner of the Sayers hurdle twice already this season in Florin Porter. And he proved that his reappearance start was no fluke whatsoever last time out yeah. in the Christmas hurdle. I agree with you where he is he's a bit of a headbanger okay. he's not entirely straightforward <laughs> but who which of these horses in the sales hurdle is straightforward none of them are mm. and home by the lee he's a bit of a buzzy sort beforehand so i'd be slightly concerned if they did fit him with headgear but at the same time like you say the way that he idles somewhat in the finish but he stays all day yes he mm. only finished sixth in the stairs hurdle last year but he's a much better horse this time around so mm. home by the lead for the pair of us two sam hopefully we're further going to bolster that with his chances but who do you like yeah i, I think you've both made very fair points but i guess deck touched on it with tear boon he's got quite a half empty glass of willy stay I'm going to go with the half full version of that glass and say he definitely will. He's got the profile to be unexposed at the trip. Uh, I, I wouldn't be over reading into the run the last day. Obviously, uh, we did have the uh, supreme winner finishing second there, but he's not quite the horse that he thought he'd be at his age now. And I, I'm not going to play that as some sort of mad case for why he's an absolute shoe in for this race. But I just think he's a really exciting horse. There's a lot more to come from him in comparison to a lot of these horses that have got a few more miles on the clock. I really, really like him for the Elliott team. The ground, I guess, would be the one thing I'd say about it. I really hope we get a good couple of weeks of rain before the festival because I think the softer, the better. I mean, this is a horse that I actually backed for the champion hurdle after his run uh, at the start of the season. So I clearly got it completely wrong there. <laughs> Gordon Elliott definitely knows more than me. Uh, and I just think at around 11 to 4, I'll be sort of probably hanging on for the day now to play. But uh, uh, my view is... He's just a really exciting prospect at the trip. And I guess I am chancing the fact that he's going to really relish it. I don't think the last run definitely 100% proves he stays. But everything looking on paper suggests he will. The fact that they're coming here, uh, I think, shows that they think they've got a great opportunity. When the champion hurdle, you know, take the favourite and stake man out, he'd be playing for third, wouldn't he? So I, I really, really think he's of interest here. And uh, I think it's a great contest. I love this race. I must say it's one of my favourite races of the festival Days of big bucks winning the race continuously were certainly good. There's no big bucks in here for me, but I definitely think it's still a great betting heat. Massively so. What an anti-post way to play this. To go from champion hurdle to stayers hurdle, Sam. So, yeah, trying to uh, trying to do that double was uh, was very interesting yourself. Now, that is our selections for the stayers hurdle. Again, do let us know your own picks for the stayers hurdle in the comments section. But now is the important part of the show. Well, the really important part of the show because it's time to get the lads' best bets for the weekend. So, Declan, your nap next best and long shot, please. Uh, nap is going to be Napper's Hill. Actually, oh, at yes. Wing Canton, yeah, a little bit of symmetry there. Um, look, I know he's got t form to turn around with First Street on the run uh, the last day at Cheltenham, but this is going to be a totally different test. We're down in trip at a much uh, sharper track going the other way around. Uh, I can just see him winning. I, I think we might get twos in the day. I have a seven to fours as short as I go now, but I just think I could see him just, you know, he, he's already won at Wing Canton there. He, he likes that track. His jumping was maybe what was holding him back originally, but I think his jumping has got better. The Dropping trip is going to suit. Danny Carwin, 
we've already touched on. Keep an eye on the ground. Yeah, the faster the ground at Ascot, the more it plays into his favour. Uh, we've, as I said, we've already touched on him. And then long shot Fortescue uh, running at Haydock in the 2.40. Uh, I've been itching for this horse to have cheek pieces on for a good while. Uh, he, all he does is travel, or all he did was race behind the bridle and jump well. He did get those the last time in the Welsh National, but he failed to fire on the day. The Henry Daly yard are a much better order at the moment. Uh, cheek pieces are on. He's got plenty of form at Haydock. Uh, I could see him running well at a decent price. Like it a lot then. Sam, your own best bets for the weekend. Yeah, I've got uh, three really interesting and intriguing ones, I think it's fair to say for myself. And we'll kick off going up to Haydock for what is a really competitive renewal of the prestige novice hurdle. A last chance really to see some names thrown into the hat for the Albert Bartlett. And at 425, I think Lucinda Russell's horse, De Legislator, I am really, really keen on. Uh, I went back through and looked at the point win. And, um, you know, you go back through, Lucinda actually bought the Russell uh, sorry, Lucinda Russell bought the second, I should say, which is Snake Roll, who's uh, gone on to really good things for her and the yard winning a couple of times. The uh, fourth is with Gordon Elliott and uh, has certainly made his mark in Ireland without winning. And the fifth for David Pipes won a maiden and a novice. So the form of the point looks absolutely rock solid. Uh, a couple of starts for Lucinda in the UK, probably not told us too much about the horse, but the manner of the victory last time out at Kelso certainly caught my eye. That was over two miles six, goes up to three miles. And I really, really think this race is a good test to see just how good this horse is. And I am fairly com confident he'll pass for flying, flying colours. Uh, next up, we go to Ascot for, and Kate, this is the most interesting profile of a horse running all weekend. Mm. We have a nine-year-old who's joined Peter Farhi, having been running in France, been off 700 days, previously was based in the UK, one on good ground, including a maiden hurdle at Plumpton. So the surface is going to be of no issue. I am very, very intrigued by Zoffany Bay. I think Peter Farhi may just have found a great opportunity. Uh, I think this horse, like I say, should be primed, ready to go. Aidan Coleman booked to ride. Then finally, my long shot comes back up at Haydock again in the Grand National Trial. I know it's not really a race that you ever associate the winner necessarily going to the National, but we've got a horse here who's won over the National fences in Snow Leopardess. I think she's a cracking each way price for me. Her sixth, which was the first start over the cross country style fences at Cheltenham last time out, showed to me that her well being definitely still there. Looking at her previous wins, they all tend to come carrying lower weights, which she gets here. Gavin Sheen now joined Bet Victor as a brand ambassador, had a great week with a nice winner at Sandown. He takes the ride. And I think a double figure price is a bit of an insult, and I'll be playing her each way here. I tell you what, Sam, that Zoffany Bay is fascinating. I have no idea how your traders managed to price him up because he could be absolutely anything for me, that horse, but three good horses for Sam to go to a war with as well. And then for my own best bets this weekend, my nap is Fakir Dudery. He's just the solid play in the 3.35 at Ascot. I know he's a favourite, but with, with so many doubts about his rivals, he has to be the nap for me. Second best, we're all going up to the Grand National Trial, the 2.40 at Haydock. My bet, though, is Fontaine Colange, who's a shorter price than the pair of your two selections. But this obviously isn't going to be the usual slog we associate with the Grand National Trial. I'm hoping that will suit Fontaine Colange, who was a super game winner of her reappearance at Haydock over three miles one last time out she just hit a flat spot when she really didn't need to be hitting that at Kempton over three miles so back to Haydock extreme trip will be right up her street and then my long shot is Tebow who's already been backed into 25 to 1 this is in the three o'clock at Ascot now he finished second at 80 to 1 in this exact race two years ago off of the same mark that he's back on here he was formerly a very consistent dual purpose horse and for all that that consistency has just waned somewhat he's back to a very feasible mark so has every chance at a big price so they are our best bets then for the weekend again do let us know your own best bets this this whole entire show is as much about your opinions as it is ours so do let us know what you fancy for this weekend so that's everything from us on this week's episode of weekend winners a big thank you to Declan and to Sam for their hard work Sam enjoy your wedding don't drink too much we we would like to see more of you then tomorrow and to see exactly how you fare <laughs> thank you so much to you at home for watching do remember you can watch all of Ascot's races live on Sky Sports Racing. You can also catch up with any extra tips and insight on the at the races.com website as well as the ATR app. We'll be back next week where we'll be previewing the Ida chase from Newcastle. So make sure you join us then.